Hi, everyone. My name is Justine. And like Heidi mentioned, I am the communications manager here at Wonderful. So, I mean, that means a whole lot of different things, but I have had a hand in organizing and helping to organize a lot of the events that we've been putting on, especially um, now that we've gone virtual and really responsible for getting the word out there about Wonderful and all of the incredible things that we do. Um, on the side, I also am the founder of a community called Living Hyphen, which explores the experiences of people who live in between cultures as part of as part of different diasporas, which is also a really important piece to my work and why, you know, conversations like an anti-racism, this anti-racism town hall is so important because we often don't think of migration as a form of travel, um, but it's so critical for us to think about why or how that has come to be. So I'm really excited for this conversation to share what, um, what I've been doing personally um, in my journey to anti-racism, but also especially the, tons of work that Wonderful has been doing over the last few months to really respond to a lot of the events that have been happening this year from the pandemic to, of course, um, the uprising in, uh, uh, for racial justice. That's me. I love it. Yeah, uh, actually, it's Greg, but um, that's all right. Um, my name is Greg Lynn Murphy. <laughs> that's all right. Um, and uh, I work on the social media and content team at TripAdvisor. So um, everything from from what we're writing and producing pieces on site to to our social channel. So uh, I'm so excited to be able to join uh, this panel today. Uh, I recognize a lot of faces from uh, uh, resources and panels that, that our team at TripAdvisor and uh, our EDNI team have shared with us. Uh, so I'm just, it's like being on stage with rock stars uh, that you've, you know, seen play before. So uh, I'm, I'm real excited and uh, I'm just glad to join the conversation here. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. So I'm Zina. I work for Intrepid Travel. Oh. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh. OK, thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm very, very pleased to be here today and joining this conversation. My name is Zina. I work for Intrepid Travel. It's been 10 years now that I'm in uh, the travel industry and with Intrepid. I've, um, I'm, uh, today, I'm the managing director of Intrepid um, and look after Europe, Middle East and Africa as a sales region. But I've started 10 years ago as a finance manager in the little Marrakesh office, which looks after the destination of Morocco and grew up throughout uh, my career with Intrepid uh, in, in different roles. Um, and and re really recently just moved into this uh, managing director role in the middle of um, COVID pandemic. So I'm very excited to be here for the ones who don't know Intrepid. Intrepid is a purpose led uh, business. We are the largest travel B Corp. We do believe that the more we invest in the purpose and the responsible side of our business, the more we grow and the more we grow, we can then invest. And it's something that's really driven everyone in our business. And it's been 31 years old that um, it's been an extremely successful, responsible travel company. And uh, very happy to be here and talk about some of the initiatives that we've done in the anti-racism space and diversity, and equity and inclusion in general. So I'm just gonna hop in here because I don't think we can hear Hadi on the stage. So I think the folks in the backstage, all of us can hear you, but I'm seeing chats here um, saying that we, the, the main stage can't hear you Hadi. So um, I'm gonna just wait until I hear a cue from our main stage folks here, um, if they can hear Hadi. But in the meantime, Tiana, tell us about your work with Away. I'm now a moderator. <laughs> Wait, now I can't hear Tiana. Go again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> T 
Tiana, can you try speaking again? Can you all hear Tiana? Is it just me? Okay. No. Okay. Can you all hear Hadi now? <laughs> you know, okay, but you guys can hear me. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep talking here. And let me tell you that the universe is out here to make racial justice and anti-oppression extremely difficult for all of us. But for those of you who are staying, thank you. We are gonna work through this. Um, can hear everyone else. Okay, Tiana is not muted. <laughs> Thanks, Bex, and thank you for all of you who are on uh, online here and chatting with us and working through this. Um, okay. Can you try speaking again? Hadi is gone. Tian, I heard you for a split second and now, do you wanna try logging in and out? I do want, yeah, thank you, Tammy. I'm, let's try that. Um, I do wanna get the conversation started. I know it is a Saturday um, and many of you have been sitting on the computer all week and these conversations are incredibly important and I don't want to lose you. Um, but I also want to do justice to this conversation and make sure that at least Tiana um, is able to join us because I know she's been doing incredible work um, with Away as well. So just bear with us for two more minutes here. Okay. Are we working now? Yeah. You can't stop us. <laughs> All right, so we're back on here. Again, if you are on uh, chat, please let us know if you are having difficulty at all hearing any of us. Um, I'm gonna try to do the best we can here. Um, perfect. Tiana, please tell us a little bit more about what you do and your work with the way. Gladly. Um, so hi again, everybody. I'm Tiana Atride and I'm the current assistant editor over at Here Magazine by Away. Um, so as for current work, so the thing that actually drew me to here in the first place was that when I looked at the web page, I saw faces that looked like mine. I feel like in the work that we're putting out, we actually do and have been doing a pretty good job of making sure we have wide representation across the board. Um, so I think right now our work is more focused on tackling more uh, covert objectives. So like, for example, we are trying to, we have like in our freelance guides, um, you know, outlines that make sure our freelancers are making sure that all of their lists, whatever they're writing is inclusive, um, making sure they have a diverse array of businesses uh, in their pitches and what they're producing for us. Um, and then obviously we're making sure that, you know, if we're having a black cover star or a shoot that surrounds, you know, native individuals, we're making sure people from those communities are the ones working on it and that we're not just hiring, you know, non-black or non-native, non-BIPOC people to do that work. Um, and then obviously we're continuing to try our best to give a platform to writers from underrepresented communities and making sure they have a place to amplify their voices. Um, but then along with continued monthly DEI training, which we do have it away, we also just launched a DEI creative council. Um, and so that's supposed to bring a lot more intersectionality to the creative team. So we have people from across the company of different races, sexualities, gender identities, abilities to come in um, and review everything that's going out to make sure that all of our work is inclusive. So that actually just launched and I'm among the first sort of class of representatives there. So I'm excited to have my hand or to have to be in the room rather and have a hand directly in pushing uh, for representation. Thank you, Tiana. See, this yeah. is why we had to wait for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, what you've been doing, so we had we just had to wait. So, um, okay, I'm working on the fly here. So for those of you who are tuning in, please bear with me. Um, but the discussion, the, the title, or yeah, the title of this panel is a look at 2021 and making and taking action. And so it is a forward-looking panel, and I think it's really important because we've had such an a wild year that we will 
continue to dwell on for many, many years. Um, but I guess I just wanted to kick off by asking you all um, what you see in the next year for the travel industry. What does it look like for you? What do you expect to see in the coming year, um, especially as it relates, of course, to this topic of anti-racism? So we'll popcorn style it here. Um, whoever wants to share, please just take the stage or take the mic. <laughs> Well, I think I definitely speak for all of us when I say that hopefully we'll be going places at all <laughs> next year. Um, but I think really the main thing that I'm expecting for next year is, you know, like over the course of the last couple of months, um, obviously after George Floyd is murdered, we saw protests come up. We saw a bunch of people posting their black squares, a bunch of initiatives get started, whatever. Um, and that was great, but I'm worried that once we get to next year, as a result of the pandemic, people are gonna be pushing, pushing, pushing for everything to open back up, for everything to get done, for the economy to restart, whatever. Um, but what I'm hoping for next year is that the industry will take the time to kind of slow down and re-enter the space a little more thoughtfully. Um, so obviously, you know, like I said, over the past couple of months, we've seen people who posted their black squares and then kind of moved on. Um, and I think that's an unfortunate reality. It's it's the way that people work. They want to kind of, you know, appease people and then push the conversation to the back burner. Um, so I think we may experience some forgetfulness, but I also think that the momentum we've gained this year is really significant and that the education around racism and activism that we've done this year will carry over on an individual level because people love, travelers especially, love to put their money where their mouths are. And I think Charisma said this earlier, but if, people aren't advocating for DEI, if they're not being inclusive, people will move on because I think inclusivity is the cultural shift. So I think, you know, every, over the course of the past few months, people have realized how important it is to just put your money where your mouth is. Um, you know, even now, I think like every black business that I've tried to purchase from is still sold out because people are just continuing to buy, buy, buy. So I think really, what I'm looking at, what we're looking at next year is a class of travelers re-entering the world who are just entirely more aware of those issues. And that will make a really big difference. I can jump on that. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. I do agree 100% with Tayana on the fact that the change will be driven by individuals. We, we should not rely on governments or even on businesses because businesses would then have to adapt to consumer choices. And this is why as at Intrapid, we've always wanted to take stands and, and be advocates when something doesn't look right for us. Uh, because by doing this, then this is how we get individuals and customers to follow us or not, but that's all right for those who don't, because uh, then we get the ones that we really want, us, uh, want to have traveling with us. So um, I couldn't agree more with you, Tayana, on that aspect. I think. What we are doing before even talking about next year, what we're doing now is going to also tell us what will happen next year. Uh, while we're going through a pandemic, you know, it's very difficult for travel businesses. We have no resources. We have no revenue coming in. It's it's kind of, you know, it's it's more than, than critical time. We do think at Intrepid that this time is quite unique in the same time. And it would be a waste not to use it to kind of reflect on how do we want to rebuild after uh, next year or whatever is going to be the next time we can travel again. And so using this time to review the way our business work, to review our responsible, uh, responsible um, travel policies, to review if we are diverse enough, if we are inclusive enough, if we are doing the right thing for our environment and all of these things, this is really what we're doing now and this is what we feel needs to be done by the whole industry so we, we can then rebound, rebound all together more responsibly um, after, after COVID. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, building on on both of your comments, I think, you know, as we start to see recovery here, um, however that looks, recovery might not look how it was before, right? Um, uh, we'll be kind of moving into a new, uh, new world of travel if recovery does take place. Um, uh, and I think we'll see opportunities and challenges with that of, you know, you have the opportunity, um, like you said, Zina, to, to, to build off of um, this this chance to reevaluate what what you've been doing, how things will work in the new world, and ensuring that inclusivity is uh, and diversity are part of of that new path for uh, for brands and for travel uh, companies. 
Um, and then the challenge being once once that recovery does take place to ensure that your you know um, commitments uh, to make these um, these improvements uh, to to better the way that travel is uh, treating um, uh, inclusivity and and uh, equality that uh, that as that starts to change and things start to scale and there's more projects there's more to be done um, that you you know keep that uh, keep your eye on the ball for the the commitments that you know you made when um, uh, you start you know down this path to to making a a better and more inclusive uh, you know travel environment or company or sort of whatever the the initiatives that your travel brand are up to so I think it's you know it's equally uh, a, a really gr a big opportunity and a, and a challenge for the travel industry to navigate. Yeah, so I'm going to put on my panelist hat now <laughs> on behalf of Wonderful here and just say there were a couple of things that really stuck out to me um, with all that you said, Tian. I think you said that, um, you know, the well, just to echo really what everyone else is saying and what we have been hearing a lot in these conversations that this um, this recent wave of, B of the BLM movement of you know, this rush for racial justice, it's not a moment, it should be a movement. I think it's the Black Travel Alliance that has repeatedly um, pushed that out there. And I think that's so critical here. And it's a reason why at Wonderful, you know, we set out to create this moving forward, this anti-racism town hall. I think it was the end of June that we had our first one. We're having our second one now. And we're having a three-part series and it will continue on in 2021 because we want this to be an ongoing discussion and something that doesn't just end, um, you know, because it's not in the news, which we have seen all too often, you know, and um, it's, 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 it's enough. It's, it's, you know, we have to change it. And one of the things that, yeah, I just want to bring that to the, to the forefront of our minds that, you know, this is an ongoing conversation. And I also wanted to share something that we at Wonderful have been working on over um, the last few months. Um, and I'm excited to share it with everyone here today. Um, it's called our anti-oppression toolkit for travel and, con and culture creators. And it is a resource that we've built um, that includes, you know, access to resources Courses, um, webinars that we're going to be hosting over the next few months or all throughout the course of 2021. Thank you, Marissa. She's just linked to it in our chat here. Um, and, you know, it's bringing together this network of creators, all of whom are part of, you know, this wonderful community. Hopefully we'll be getting other um, people who we may not have yet been in touch with um, to join the, us and really taking some of these resources and taking it into our everyday practice into our creator work. And um, I share it today because one, it was something I've been working on really hard. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. But I wanted to just point out the fact that we called it an anti-oppression toolkit as opposed to an anti-racism toolkit because what we want to take um, forward here at Wonderful is the fact that Systems of oppression occur at so many different intersections of identity, not just race. You know, we have gender, we have body size, we have religion, we have all of these different intersections of identity that really overlap and compound onto one another. And I think it is impossible for us to really just isolate one piece of this really big quilt fabric, whatever, I don't know the metaphor, but I hope that you all check it out and it's something that you do um, take moving forward. Um, and I brought that up too, because Zena, you mentioned how as individuals, we have a role and responsibility to use whatever power and influence that we have and really leverage that, you know? And so we often, a primary audience or the community at Wonderful are these creators who have platforms where they can effect change and influence so many, so many people. And we have to take that responsibility and that role really seriously. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, and I hope you take it into your work. And, um, and now my moderator. <laughs> Um, if anyone has anything else to share, or you can share, um, if you did have a magic wand, how would you, what would you want to see in the travel industry happen it next year?
It's a big question. I'm happy to. But go for it, Zina. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to be very, very quick in my response. I just think that uh, now, because I've personally lived it this way, I've been in the travel industry only working for Intrepid and I've grown so much and I've learned so much and I've seen so much positive that travel can bring to local communities, to reduce inequality, to empower women, um, you know, to bring wealth from developed part of the world to developing part of the world, that, you know, it does act as a force for good. So if, can, if it's done well, it's one of the if not the most amazing industry on earth. So if I had the magic wind, I just want everyone and all the travel businesses to understand that um, and, and, and make sure that we rebound, we come out of this um, using travel as a force for good to create positive change on the planet and for people. So very quick answer, but that what would, what would have, I would, uh, sorry, what I would do. <laughs> I think for me, it would probably be two boops of my magic wand. I think the first one would be, and I do think like intersectionality is such an important topic to cover. Like obviously here I'm speaking as like a black woman, but I think it's like when you're a part of a marginalized community, you also become more aware that like everybody needs that kind of representation. Um, and so I think first of all, I'd like to see the normalization obviously of black individuals for myself, but for more, travelers across the board to be represented industry-wide. So whether that's in advertisements, in tourism board initiatives, in PR trips, I think somebody on another panel mentioned like they're usually the only person of color on a PR trip. I can definitely relate. Um, and PR, and you know, I think it would be a magic wand over like PR firms generally, whether that means we're visiting more diverse businesses or there are simply more diverse people on press trips. Um, I would definitely magic up an environment that's more like comfortable and considerate. But then I also think something that I would magic over, and that's a big conversation right now too, is like environmental friendliness and the thoughtfulness of tourist, tourism agencies. Um, because I think when we talk about things, things, we talk a lot from the perspective of like black travelers or, you know, you know, BIPOC owned businesses or as companies, but we also need to start thinking about like people who are on the ground, black and brown people who are communities who are like existing in the places that we visit. So, you know, we have to think about are these places being ravaged by tourism? Are the hotels and tourism boards um, or tour agencies respecting those people's cultures, their land and their livelihoods? Like we have to make sure that we're protecting all of us. So I think I think somebody in a chat earlier brought up the phrase like intersectional activism and making sure that comes over to the travel space too. Yeah, it's very uh, uh, difficult to pick one thing to to magic wand away. Um, but uh, with so many other answers, uh, great answers here. I think one I would um, say as as a, an ally um, is to uh, for you know allies allies to sort of recognize and understand the. Um, power and responsibility of their positions to help advance anti-racism and um, and their colleagues uh, in in all facets of what they're doing every day. That there's opportunities, um, large and small, to um, to make decisions that help push forward um, anti-racism for to push forward uh, equality across accessibility. Um, um, and and those aren't things that are necessarily limited to large. Uh, large decisions that your company has to make, it can be things that you're doing every single day. So I think if if you were able to really have that be broadly understood by everyone who had the the opportunity to use their position as an ally to its full potential, we could see such change um, uh, uh, quickly, so. Thank you. Yeah, I think that um, it's obviously a really strange position that we're all in given, you know, the time and the world that we live in. And I, I've been thinking about this and uh, there are so many things to magic wand away, but I guess working even within the reality of this pandemic and what we might see in the next year, I think that the fact that we aren't able to travel internationally, I hope that our industry and you know all travelers kind of take that as some strange blessing in disguise to actually explore their own backyards and to look at what are the small businesses that are right here in your own hometown that you can support from, you know, and, and with the intentionality and the mindfulness of all of the conversations that we're having now, you know, and 
I'm, I'm just speaking about this as a traveler, I guess, on a more personal basis and that this year for the first time, I have traveled so much of Ontario, which is in Canada, um, more than I've ever, ever done before. And to really understand like what is happening here, all the beauty that lies here. And I mean, again, like for my own, what I've been able to see for myself is that there's a lot going on here that I have not paid attention to because I have always had this global mindset, which I think is still important, but I don't know. For example, in Canada, there are a whole number of different issues um, with our relationship to Indigenous nations. You know, we are on um, sacred territorial land that was stolen from Indigenous nations. And so I'm suddenly diving deeper into my work there. And it's something that I hope other people also um, move towards as we, you know, we travel within, you know, we travel in our in our own hometowns or in our home cities. Um, I guess that's something that I don't know if that's it's not that magical, <laughs> but I think it's a good place to start is that intentionality um, for all travelers um, from an industry side, from an enthusiast side to really look at the places that they are at. Um, obviously there's like a lot of work to do. Um, so I wanted to ask based on the stuff that you have all been doing so far in your work um, with your respective brands, what challenges do you still foresee in, in the next year? in this work of, you know, anti-racism and DEI, DEI practices, what are some of the obstacles that we can still anticipate moving forward? I think probably first and foremost, I think, for, I think first and foremost, the main issue is, like I said earlier, going to be continuing to keep the energy. I think like something that's, you know, that I've continued to see like, as the black square is faded away and less people are talking about protests or about race or whatever. I think something that I keep repeating is, well, I'm still black, even after you stop thinking about race is always gonna be the thing. So I think it's going to be just making sure people are actually committed to their activism, continually, continually rather reminding people that these initiatives matter. Um, and then I think always, you know, there are uncomfortable conversations to be had, like the, or to be had rather, those kind of, you know, talking about race is a stressful thing. I don't think anybody <laughs> loves to do it because it, it is, it's stressful, it's uncomfortable, but they're necessary conversations. Um, so I think continuing to have those, continuing to remind people that these issues are important, continuing to know, to acknowledge that the conversations are uncomfortable, but knowing that we have to have them anyway. And I think also continuing to just be open to criticism. I think that like a place that a lot of people end up getting stuck is in this thinking that because you can talk about racism at length, and this is for anybody really, because you can talk about racism at length that there's not more to learn when it's just not true. So a lot of people will get really worked up or they'll get really defensive if you get a correction or something like that. But I think we all need to be we, we all need to remember moving forward, like you're gonna screw up all the time, everybody will, but it's about taking that criticism, acknowledging it, and I, both taking that into account moving forward and educating others if you hear somebody else make the same mistake. Like it's, it's always gonna be uncomfortable, but it's about making sure we accept that comfort and keep pushing forward anyway. I guess if I if I can go next, the the main challenge would be uh, I think you mentioned it a little bit, um, Tana, is to keep uh, the this topic on the top of the agenda while travel businesses are really navigating through a complicated time. Um, we know at Intrepid we will. However, when the Black Lives Matter movement started, it did make us feel very uncomfortable. A lot of us in our business questioned, uh, just among ourselves, um, what are we going to do about that? Should we say something? We should say something. And how are we going to get this to the top level? To our CEO, really, to to kind of make a decision of on doing something. And it didn't take us a lot of time to get there because we're very kind of open with a very almost flat hierarchy and communication. You know, uh, among us uh, works really well. And I know one of our our team member who is a um, global social um, media manager has emailed the CEO straight away saying we have to do something. Look, we are we've got a base in the US. Our business is implemented in 30 different countries. I, I don't want to say a fake number, but maybe half of it is around Africa, Latin America, and Asian countries. 
we don't have the right to not say anything about it. So, and do anything about it, obviously comment about it. So I think from our business perspective, I'm not worried, but I think from a travel, travel industry perspective, I'm really worried. And I'm in the UK, right now my job is based in London, and, um, and I get involved a lot in, in discussions with uh, uh, you know, other, other businesses in the travel industry in the UK. And when we speak about sustainability, the first thing I hear, especially now is, we don't have money for that. We don't have time for that. We don't have resources for that. We have to save our business. What I think they're missing is that if they would spend some time and some money, and often it's not necessarily a lot, it's really just the time and, and some of the resources into you know, trying to improve and start somewhere really, then they will be in a much better position to rebound when, when things come back. Because again, it will be driven by customers who will want to travel with some brands, but not with others. And the ones that will be uh, the one that they will choose will be the one who stand for them and the one who who did um, uh, do the right thing and committed to 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 the change. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't think I think when we have these conversations, people always think of things as like separate initiatives. When really, inclusivity should be something that is incorporated into our everyday business practices. Like that should be the norm industry wide. So I totally agree. I don't I don't think it has to be necessarily about money to create separate initiatives. It should just be about how can we change what we currently have to be more inclusive for everybody. Absolutely. I think that that like keeping the um, momentum of of 2020 and what we're talking about here into your 2021 plans to. Yeah, you're right. Like every decision you make, every piece of content you build, um, does not have to be part of an an, an ED and I initiative. It's it's every decision you have the opportunity to make in 2021 can be an opportunity for improvement and change, um, and just like keeping that um, that rolling uh, as yeah we start to plan for what next year looks like, um, keeping that momentum up and that understanding too that this isn't a you know a vertical for us to hop in and hop out of. It's something we're doing all year long. Um, be so important. So that's definitely one uh, uh, for me to that that uh, echoing what you said is is really top of mind. I'm really glad that you brought that up because I think that is one of the challenges that I see in not just the travel industry, but in all across um, every industry really is that now that we're having these conversations about DEI, um, I've seen in so many different companies, again, not just the travel industry, where the DEI committee or the DEI department or whatever, it's always separate, you know, and it's not built into every part of your business, which is, it needs to be, you know, it's not something that you could just silo off into a separate committee. What I've seen terribly too, in a lot of companies is that it's a, uh, what's the word extracurricular, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's something that you do office hours. And I think that is a huge challenge because who are the people who will be able to even join these, um, DEI committees, you know, it's people who, do you have the privilege to take that extra time at the end of the day, you know, who don't have kids, who don't have families, you know, and who can afford to not be compensated for this really, really integral work. And so we are in these ways replicating these systems of oppression. And so I think that's a huge challenge and um, one of the barriers that we really need to break apart. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it goes beyond the travel industry, um, but I'm glad that you brought it up because I just, hate seeing that it is a separate item, you know, and I think that's what I have loved about working with Wonderful is just that everything that we do is coming from this lens of inclusivity. You know, it's not like any of us, there's no like DEI person who's responsible for this. It's just integrated in a lot of our work and um, not to, you know, pat ourselves on the back, but I think it is what has made a lot of our programming uh, different and so much more inclusive for, for all folks. And so I'm glad that you guys brought it up. I'm just seeing a question here from um, my boss here, Beth Santos. So maybe I will address it. <laughs> Beth wants to know, you all represent really enormous travel brands here. <laughs> what do you think is your unique responsibility to be a leader in moving travel forward? What do you wish you could just say to everyone else? I'm happy to go uh, next, if you don't mind. And, mm -hmm. and just, we had 31 years of exponential growth since we existed. And the last four, especially when we really did accelerate our, as we get our 
the, the focus on the purpose side of our business, and we do not have a separate DNI uh, department in Intrepid. It, it's just embedded at all level, and we actually have a chief purpose officer that sits at that uh, committee, like highest level committee um, level, to make sure that it's really embedded everywhere. So, for us, sorry, I kind of lost the what I wanted to say. Can you just uh, go back to the question of that? Sorry. Yes, so we are all representing really big brands in the travel industry here. And yeah. so um, what is well, our we... responsibility as a leader? Yeah, and so what I wanted to say about the fact that we've been growing exponentially and, and being so successful as this business is that it is the right thing to do if you want your business to, to, to thrive. And so to us, there is a very, very close link between the work we've done on the, the purpose side and the growth that we've generated as a business. And it's not just in terms of revenue and, and all of that. We are we are attracting better people to work for us as well because we have been advocating and obviously, you know, growing the, our customer database and, and all of that. So, so, you know, what I would tell everyone else is that that's the right thing to do because that's the right thing to do for your business, really. I think on my side i actually i was in a panel a few weeks ago and somebody said something that really stuck with me it was it was, it was like an, it was a panel on um the environment and travel and somebody spoke up and was like you know journalists y'all are at the forefront of this you're the forward facing side you're the one that's influenced i mean we're again i feel like i echo a lot of other people's sentiment i'm not an influencer but like as somebody who has some influence on the industry what my business is putting out there i feel like it's important for us to go out of our way to make sure that we are inclusive because if we're you know if we're featuring uh black and brown businesses across our pages if we're featuring if we're if we're highlighting tourism industries that make sure that they have inclusivity initiatives we are setting up travelers to champion those businesses and make sure that that is something that other travel companies look at and say like okay well this is what we need to be doing because this is what the industry is like is is looking for rather we play a huge role in putting those people's work out there. Um, and so definitely making sure that what we are putting out is inclusive, I feel like is the biggest role that I can have in the industry when it comes to inclusivity. And then on top of that, obviously making sure that we're hiring, we're contracting black writers, photographers, um, et cetera. Yeah, and um, I think like it was mentioned, like you mentioned, like sort of um, the a responsibility to, uh, uh, you know, use the scale of some of these brands of, you know, brands that are not on this panel, you know, if you're listening that, you know, the responsibility to um, use that to be able to bring more diverse voices, um, bring in diverse partners. Um, you may not have the expertise to do this internally. And, you know, that's where we, you know, turn to the you know, Association of African American Museums to to find you know how can we better surface uh, uh, this these uh, organizations uh, to our own communities. Um, if we're producing guides, uh, like you said, Tiana, the uh, making sure that we're hiring um, writers, uh, a diverse set of writers for both like the subject that's being talked about, if it's specific to how a, a specific type of traveler experiences the world and also just generally across all of our content that it doesn't have to be a um hispanic heritage month celebration guide it can be a guide to go and camping and out you know camping outdoors uh, that you're contracting that work out to a, diver a diverse set of, of people and i think it's really um understanding you know to echo something i said before that's just every every uh decision that you're making and sort of every dollar you're spending is an opportunity to uh integrate this better uh, into your, your full strategy and have it be part of um, the uh, foundation and sort of brand DNA of what's going on rather than, you know, something off to the side, so. I'm seeing another question here, and I think it is an important one to address as well. Obviously, you know, we're here on this panel for a reason because our companies have adopted really well all of these DEI practices, but for those who are you know, probably working with a brand that hasn't been as receptive to this, what advice would you have to give for folks to advocate for, um, to their superiors to embrace, um, to embrace DEI in, in their workplace? What advice do you have to give on that?
it's such a complicated sure. question because we've all been like, in, oh, sorry, Zina, do you want to go? <laughs> no, no, that's all right. You go. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, yeah. I mean, this is it's it is hard. It's it's hard because I feel like I've been saying over the course of the last couple of months, I've been I've been lucky to be in a position where I can speak openly about the issues that my community is facing. Like it's it's been encouraged, but yeah, a lot of people are in a position where that's not yeah that isn't the case. I think I think there's a lot of power in community, <laughs> whether that's like just finding comfort in the workplace, meeting up with other people who are feeling who are feeling similarly, who are frustrated that DI initiatives are not at the top of the agenda because I do think that there's powers in numbers. So if you can find a community within your workplace, I think that there is power in having cross, you know, having cross-functional power um, and making sure that people know that they are not alone in their desire to push for more inclusivity and diversity in their workplace. Um, and I think it empowers people to speak up a little bit more, know that other people within the business have their back. Um, and I think that does trickle up to the top eventually. It becomes more of a culture that way. Um, so I would definitely recommend people find their community, whether it's you need to vent your frustration or you're really ready to push for change because it's a, it's a frustrating thing. But I do definitely think there, are, there is power in knowing that you are not alone. And join the She's Wonderful community, obviously. <laughs> we didn't pay her to do that, to say that. <laughs> Greg or Zina, did you have any advice on that that you want to share before we wrap up? I, I think that was, you know, very well said. Uh, I don't have a ton to add there as, as much as it's, um, if you, you know, take advantage of these types of um, uh, conversations going on, right? Like, you know, being able to hear expert voices to, uh, uh, to you know, come up with different, I mean, different strategies. It's, it's difficult to know uh, how, what your internal uh, situation is look, looking like at your company and, and the parties involved, but um, knowing that there are uh, resources like this out here, the wonderful community, um, there are always panels going on uh, for you to join to just uh, uh, continue to like educate yourself and be able to find, um, you know, folks that you can connect with and discuss one on one. I mean, there's uh, opportunities to build business relationships here uh, to bring in expert, you know, um, counsel to talk, you know, one on one. Uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, uh, finding folks and, you know, getting um, uh, people in to discuss your your problems is a, a uh, and then a small investment you you know can make to to hopefully uh, you know get a better idea and understand like what your your company situation is like how you can advocate best for for your own goals. So uh, I know there's tons of folks out there that will will um, come in and speak on this. So um, but I think uh, just take advantage of the resources that that are out here because they are you know. You know, um, I would like to give an example, actually, to answer this, because um, when we uh, committed as a business to create uh, an anti-racism training that was mandatory for all our staff, that was a very recent commitment. We've done it on the back uh, of the, the Black Lives Matter. And as I mentioned earlier, we had people within our teams that were not really feeling very comfortable, that really wanted our business to do something about it. So one of the first commitments that we came up with was create an anti-racism training uh, mandatory for all staff and we've actually launched it this month and I was part of a very small group of people who trialed it so we were around 20 of us from different backgrounds different nationalities different religions and all of that and I felt by going through this training that I maybe have been victim of racism myself and I didn't realize because they were part of the the concepts you know uh, that I actually didn't I couldn't put the word racism on it and it was just a word that I've heard or sentence or something that um, made me feel uncomfortable um, but I really didn't realize that I was actually a victim of that. So for me, um, it is quite incredible that we as a business have been able to drive a change like this that doesn't look like huge. It doesn't involve a lot of money. It doesn't involve a massive amount of investment. It's training, really. But a training that gives us the basic of what does that mean to be you know, to be anti-racism and what does racism mean really? 
Um, and because we have, again, we and a lot of businesses like us, we are implemented in so many countries. We have people from different backgrounds, different nationalities. You don't look at this topic from the same way if you are, you know, from Latin America or if you're a black person, or if you're Moroccan like I am, a Muslim person. So it's just very, very um, important to try to get your business to do these type of things, no matter where you sit, no matter which position you are in. Because uh, again, as an example for us, it really came from different people in our business and not necessarily from the top, but it's been adopted by the top because the top realized that it was actually very important to do it. So if you don't work for a company that is enabling that, then change job. That's what <laughs> I know it's not that easy today, but it's still, uh, you know, it's still it be my thought. <laughs> Thanks for that, Zina. Um, I just thought that was a really unique of an of a, an approach and something that I haven't heard a lot of people say, but I think there's something to that actually. That um, I think we talk a lot about these issues of anti-racism and how do we take a stand and things like that. And for those of us who don't work in places that are conducive for that or who who cultivate um, these conversations. I don't know, I just feel like there has to be a point where we do step out of it and it takes a lot of risk personally, you know, and professionally even. Um, but I feel like that's a huge part of, you know, I'm thinking also with the creators because that's something, that's an area that I, I work with with Wonderful a lot, you know, like are we as creators saying no to contracts who with brands that don't align with our values are we really putting ourselves on the line here and taking that sacrifice or taking that risk for ourselves for this for something that we're saying that we really care about um so i think there's something to that and um we are out of time so it's a bit of a strange one to end on but something i do i have been thinking a lot about and something that i do think we we need to consider, um, again, like our role and responsibility and how do we move beyond the talk of anti-racism and actually, you know, step into action. Sometimes that means removing ourselves from these places, these friendships, these relationships with brands, with people in our lives, whatever it is, um, to really stand for, for what we believe in here. Um, so we are out of time here and I am going to wrap up, but I wanna thank you all so much for, um, for taking the time to share what you're doing with each of your different businesses and brands. Um, again, for all of you who are watching on stage, do check out um, all the work that um, TripAdvisor and Intrepid Travel and Away are doing um, because they are truly leaders, not just in the travel indus industry writ large, but in this conversation of anti-racism. Um, and so it's such an inspiration to learn from all of you. And I thank you again for being here today. I thank all of you <laughs> who are uh, watching, for bearing with us and our technical difficulties seven months into this pandemic. And we are still learning a whole lot. But again, um, a lot of challenges are going to come our way in having these conversations. Technology doesn't even want us to talk about this, but we are going to continue talking about it. <laughs>